Hello and welcome to Natalie and Company. I am Natalie and you're the company. As a lifelong admirer of Vincent Van Gogh, not just his paintings, but his life, his personages, you know, everything that Vincent Van Gogh was. And considering that Vincent Van Gogh is one of the most popular artists, I figured most people probably had some work of his that was their favorite, right? <laughs> so I have a stack of books here for you based on your favorite Vincent Van Gogh painting. So let's get started. First things first, Starry Night. Everybody's favorite, my least favorite. And when I say that, I don't mean that it's bad in any way, shape, or form. I just mean out of all the hundreds of paintings that Van Gogh did, it means the least to me. But I know that's not the case for everybody. So if Starry Night is your favorite Vincent Van Gogh painting, I would like to recommend to you The Secret History by Donna Tartt. The Secret History is a dark, academia the dark academia if you will written in the 90s about a group of liberal arts college students recounting their experiences of what happened when one of their friends was murdered because while this recommendation is pretty basic it is truly essential to the culture Next is one of my personal favorites of his, Skull with a Cigarette. Dark and mysterious and fueled by the interpretation of the reader. If the Skull with a Cigarette is your favorite Van Gogh, I might recommend to you The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Shadow of the Wind is a tale of a boy who is taken to the cemetery of forgotten books and given the opportunity to rescue one singular book that he is to dedicate his entire rest of his life to protecting and making sure that it doesn't go lost, disappear. It turns into this whimsical mystery about a author who is missing and all of his works being progressively destroyed again and again and you're plunged into discovering why this is happening because this little boy holds the last cop of this author and so he knows that the person who's trying to destroy this author's books will be coming for him. I loved this book. It was so enjoyable. I thought that Carlos Ruiz's Zafon's writing was so wonderfully intricate. The ponderances here really do remind me of The Skull with the Cigarette because it's very much so about literature and war and the preservation of knowledge, the death of knowledge, and what that means to humans, what that means to life, what that means to all of it, uh, how information interacts with it all, and how literature is so worthy of being saved, and reminds me so dearly of the skull with a cigarette. In the bedroom in Aries, you imagine a man and the simplicity of his life, just as you do with The Notebooks of Multi Lord Briggs by Rainier Maria Rilke. Rilke is mostly known for his poetry, but in this one and only novel that he ever wrote, he tells the story of a kindred spirit to Van Co, in a way, a man that is frayed at the edges and losing his patience. To me, you can almost imagine Mr. Briggs inhabiting Van Gogh's bedroom in Aries. This is a very strange and slightly warped tale uh, about a man, an older man, in search of memory, in search of meaning, and partly inspired by Rilke's life. I've personally always felt like Rilke and Van Gogh were very similar artists to me, so I think it's fitting that they might potentially live in a similar type of bedroom. If we move on to the cafe terrace at night, let's say, having one of Van Gogh's dreamier paintings as your favorite might have you enjoying Harun and the Sea of Stories by Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie is most often known for his children's bedtime stories, but I think that just as most fairy tales, his books hold as much value for an adult as they do for a child. In Harun and the Sea of Stories, Harun wakes up 
to find a resident of Dreamland at the foot of his bed requesting his presence because he is needed to save the Dreamland. Uh, this was just such a deeply whimsical and bright tale despite it being about dreams. Its muddiness caused it to shine in all reality, which summarizes my feelings about the Cafe Terrace at night. The whimsical characters here and a sky you can almost step into carry both the painting and Rushdie's novel. Alternatively, if the cafe terrace at night is not warm enough for you and you prefer the night cafe instead, Inkheart by Cornelia Funk might be a little bit of a better bedtime story for you. Inkheart is the story of a little girl who finds out that when her father reads things aloud it causes the stories to come to life and it devolves into this adventure because the people from her father's past come looking for them. This is a pretty classic YA fantasy. It's a series again um, but it's a similar whimsical level of Harun in the Sea of Stories but I think it is a little more warmer. A little warmer. A little more forgiving. A little kinder to its characters than Harun and the Sea of Stories with its allegory or fable type structure. Now, if the Yellow House, a weird one, but a good one, is your favorite, it's an interesting pick. Not a bad one by any means though. The energy of this Yellow House reminds me of the house in 100 Years of Solitude. The focal point of both the painting and the story being the home that this family lives in. In this painting and in 100 Years of Solitude alike, the buildings, the homes come alive. They inflict damage upon the story that's being told. And more than that, they hide multitudes away from the world, leaving so much left unspoken. There is an equal measure of melancholy in both pieces of art. If we move on to one of Van Gogh's most innocent paintings, in my opinion, reminiscent of the bright spot that is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Both hold such an energy of spring. They both hold the blue, blue sky in the palm of their hand. I think that's something that I remember most about the wind in the willows is how often they talked about what the sky looks like. To me, almond blossoms is more about the sky than the blossoms itself. Now, the sunflowers, my personal favorite, hold an initial impression that is bright and cheery, but the more time spent with the painting, the more Van Gogh's deep sadness seeps through. Especially when you consider the story of Van Gogh eating yellow paint in an attempt to cheer himself up, this painting holds something so much more sorrowful than originally thought. That is why here I would recommend Comfort Me With Apples. Comfort Me With Apples is the story of a woman living in a suburb who uh, has a nearly perfect life, yet she can't help but feel like there's something deeply wrong with it. Cover Me With Apples is one of my favorite books on this list. It is a jaw-dropping allegory, while very, very short, contains so many multitudes. And within those multitudes, it contains an inner darkness that is hidden and wrapped with layer after layer after layer. If you love Van Gogh's mini figure studies most, you probably enjoy the small views into another person's world. That's why I recommend Crossing the Water by Sylvia Plath. As Plath spends her poetry collection analyzing the meaning of the self and all its evolutions, the change that people go through, transitions as a concept. And I love Sylvia Plath's poetry. Now, with finality. To me, every portrait of Van Gogh seems like an attempt to discover or find answers about the self. His suffering is deeply evident despite his determination to continue with his art, with his purpose. And that's why here I would recommend to you Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. This is the story of Viktor Frankl, who was a psychiatrist that went through the Holocaust. It is at first, his tale and his experience of how he survived, and second, a psychiatrist analysis of the drive for purpose. He uh, proposes here that without purpose, there is no reason to keep on living. And to me, Van Gogh's purpose of painting was the only reason that he was around for as long as he was. The stories of both men tell deeply harrowing tales that culminate in joy. 
and I think that's important. I went to Philadelphia on a solo trip and walking around the city decided to wander into the Philadelphia Museum of Art not knowing that the sunflowers was out on exhibit there. My tears did feel a little embarrassing as I walked up to see the real sunflowers that Van Gogh had painted sitting in front of me. To me, Van Gogh is the number one example of somebody who triumphed despite his pain, despite his curses, despite his disposition. He chose to continue to make the world a better place. He didn't harbor anger for it, he didn't harbor pity or greed or disgust. Partly why I think that sadness is the most human emotion that you can have. Because what do most artists create out of, if not a deep, unending abyss that sorrow can be? Van Gogh has always been important to me. And so is reading. So I hope you enjoyed these book recommendations. Let me know which Van Gogh painting is your favorite. We can chat Van Gogh all day in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, of course. And thanks for keeping me company here at Natalie and Company. I hope I see you again soon.